When you have money, when you have budget, marketing and advertising is so much easier. But what do you do if you're a startup, if you have no money or no budget, if you're trying to turn things around, how do you generate leads? How do you grow your business? I get calls every single day from people who sheepishly ring me up. Uh, I have this idea. I'm, I'm just looking into it. I don't really know what anything costs. And that's because in our marketing agency, we appeal to a lot of different people, people with high hopes, with high dreams, people who are trying to make it happen. But here's the thing, when you come to a company like ours, we charge money. We're certainly more expensive than zero dollars. And so the reason people are sheepish when they call me up, they say, I have $200. And I say, our project started eight grand. They're gonna get pretty embarrassed by it. I try to make them feel better. I try to give them some tips. But here's the thing. If you're reaching out to people, if you're reaching out to an agency or a marketing company, you're trying to get someone else to build your company for you, it's gonna cost a lot of dollars. And so when you're in startup mode, when you don't have a lot of cash flow to support the new campaign, the new marketing, the new activities you're doing, how do you make this happen? It falls on your shoulders to make this happen. Don't get overwhelmed because there are three simple things that you can focus on to grow your business, generate more leads, and do your own marketing without spending a single dollar on it. So the first, take a cold hard look at your website. I know it seems obvious, I know it seems basic, but there are huge companies and small companies, people with money and no money who do terrible, terrible websites. You know, you don't really say what you're doing, you don't really have any design or photography in there, you just, you just don't do a good job of explaining who you are and what you do and why you do what you do and how you help people and in language that's common based off of people who are looking for you. I'm not talking about lead generation strategies or landing pages or split testing or anything advanced. I'm talking about just your website. Do you have three pages? Do you have five pages? Do you have eight pages that just make sense? You know, in your navigation, are you using words that are intuitive? In the way you explain yourself, when someone lands on that page and sees the headline there, does it say something like, we do this, we help people do that? Or do you actually speak in you terms? Do you speak to the people who are there, to the people you wanna help? You know, have you thought about the values you drive? Like just really basic things. And then look at Wix, look at Squarespace, look for templates that are free even, and start to drop your stuff in there because there are so many solutions and so many things you can do without hiring crazy developers and without hiring crazy amounts of designers or anything else like that. Like for, for next to no money, if you spend your time and your focus on it and ask some friends and get some opinions and learn about your clients and try writing and then try making it better and better and better, it will fill the gap. This is not a long-term solution. This is not a replacement for coming to an agency or hiring a great designer or, or coming out with a world-class company. This is filling the gap. This is, I have no money right now. I need to turn things around. I'm in a startup and I'm desperate for clients and I need something that doesn't lose me the sale, something that doesn't embarrass me, something that explains things. For our own firm, our website is two years old and completely out of date. You know, it looks pretty good. It has some great examples on it, obviously, because we've been doing this for 13 years, but it does not explain who we are right now. And so we are in the process of hiring new people into our firm, and if they go to our website, it literally doesn't say what we do right now or who we are or how we act or anything. And so I spent a day and a half on a Wix site that is like four pages, and it's super clean designed. I just grabbed a template and I just started writing who we are and what our culture code is and what our services is and how it works. There's no photography. There's uh, like barely any icons on there. It's mainly just words. Super, super clean, super minimalistic, simple. Because I am in desperate need to explain to the people who are applying to our company who we are and what we're about. For zero dollars, I threw up a Wix site, and guess what? It's gonna do the job. And so that's the first thing that you need to do is get your website to a point where it explains what you do, why you do it, who you are, all of those things. Doesn't embarrass you, doesn't lose you the sale, doesn't hurt your credibility. Get something up on a template right away. The next thing you need to do, you're gonna pick one social media platform and you're gonna start doing stuff there three, four, five times a week. You need to decide what your skill sets are and the best place for you to be. Focus on introducing yourself to as many people as possible. 
Today, you know where the place to go. You gotta go to a social media channel. If you don't have money for an advertising campaign, if you're not gonna start throwing money at things, then you need to start introducing yourself to people in the current cocktail party that is social media. Is your home base gonna be Facebook? Is it gonna be Instagram? Or if you're in B2B, LinkedIn? Do you love the idea of Twitter? If you already find yourself on one of these platforms loving it, then you are way ahead. But if not, if you're uncomfortable, like I was uncomfortable being on social media, if you're uncomfortable saying, look at me world, I'm awesome, that's not what it's about. What it's actually about is sharing with the world who you are, what you're trying to do, your intentions, and giving them a sense of how you think, giving them a sense of what you do and why you do it that way so that way they can learn from you or they can be entertained by you. I love writing like really long posts on Instagram. Like for me, because I'm so visual and I love visual things, I love using Instagram for photography and for stories and all those things. But I actually use it as like my daily journal. I, I literally will release stuff and write these super long posts, whether people read them or not, like just workshopping ideas on Instagram. And you may not ever think of Instagram as a written platform, but I really enjoy writing there. And so, you have to decide whether it's Twitter because you love the interaction and you love the now, or it's LinkedIn because you're more B2B and you wanna be able to share expertise, or Instagram because it's a little bit more visual. Like I said, you can write stuff, you can share stories and videos, or whether it's Facebook. You need to pick the one platform that you are gonna spend time on. You need to decide if you wanna entertain people, or if you wanna educate them, and then you need to start releasing stuff. Here's the great thing. You don't even have a following yet. You should use this as a moment of freedom to say I can literally make mistakes, I can literally scrape my knees and get back up, I can do anything. Like, I've released stuff with typos. I'm, I'm a copywriter, like we write amazing strategic copy for people. I run an agency, but guess what? You know, one person noticed. The thing with these social platforms is you don't have to know about algorithms or hashtags, you don't have to do any of that stuff. You literally just have to consistently release content that's true to you. Decide who you wanna be, decide who you wanna help, of course, start putting content out right away. And number three, you need to decide the one activity that you are going to do consistently that will help you blow up. And so the natural thing that people in startup or people with no money do is they think, I'm going to go networking. Well, if you're an extrovert and you're in kind of a niche and you're in an area or a city or something where there's lots of people where networking makes sense, then have at it. Go network, have fun, shake hands and take people for dinner and coffees and do all of those things. But what if you're an introvert? What if you're far from the hubbub of the city? What if you're working from home? What if you just find that you're in an industry where people aren't coming together and networking? Well then the idea of networking is a total waste of time. And so you are gonna select one activity that you are going to do that leverages everything that makes you you. If you're an artist, then go out there and pick your favorite piece of content or culture or area and create the best art that you can. Give your time to creating something that you absolutely love and you would do whether people are paying you or not and then go ahead and share that on Reddit. Share it on your social platforms. Go ahead and put it out there as, a, as an art collective or something. If you love talking to people, start that podcast. Start interviewing people. Start learning from them and then take that audio and start to put it out there. If you love networking, network. If you love one-on-ones, grab coffees with people. If you find that you're really good at, at getting attention, then start a PR strategy where more people and newspapers come to you. You know, every business that starts to grow without spending money on advertising, they all tell us that this is the secret. You know, they say, this, look, I, I grew my business to $10 million without spending a single dollar on advertising. And then when you dig into how they did it, they did it because they just literally did the thing that they love the most and it kind of blew up. So I've seen people talk about how Facebook was the answer to growing their business huge. Well, it's because they love being on Facebook. They love doing photography. They love managing a group and, and bringing people together and answering questions. But that doesn't mean Facebook is gonna work for me or maybe for you. You know, I love having one-on-one -on -one coffees with people and conversations and, and just digging into who they are. So that could look like networking. It could look like a podcast, but mostly I just call people up and take them out for lunch or coffee and just get to know them. But if you, don't like people or like their backstories the way that I love learning about people, it's not gonna work for you. So besides your website and besides the social platform that you are going to go onto, you are gonna select one activity that you can do consistently that is true to you that you can dedicate time into. 
If you are trying to market with zero budget for your startup or turn your company around, you have to do these three things. And then when they start to work and you're tired of all the scrappy stuff that you're doing, you can start to pull some budget out and get real with marketing. But for now, if you do these things and you do them well, they will take you so far. But here's the thing, most people won't do it. Right? Most people won't spend the time that they need on their website to really do a good job. They'll just give up. They won't spend the time on it. And most people get depressed with social media. They start it, they get excited about it. Guess what, three months in, fewer people are hearting your thing or liking your thing and you've seen things start to fall off. And if you just stay with it, if you're just consistent, if you push through, you know, you're gonna get there, but people give up. And they get excited about jumping into something. You know, I'm gonna have all these coffees with people. I'm gonna set all these meetings up and they set up some meetings, but then they, they don't follow up or they don't really care or they do it for now, but then they get busy and they ignore it. So these three things you need to do with everything that you've got. And the thing that's gonna make you rock at this is your obsession and your passion and your commitment. So I want you to promise me that you're gonna get obsessed about this. That you're gonna do each of these activities with full passion. And then you're gonna come back to me and tell me, thank you, Mark. This was the best. You're also gonna remember, that you have to think big, you have to be bold, and you have to say yes. <laughs> That's getting more fun there. That was a long one. If growing and scaling your business by being better at sales and better at marketing, better at customer experience is important to you, be sure to check out this video right over here. And like always, subscribe to my channel, click on the bell icon, and get each video every day when it drops.